Cassandra Renee, the radio show where we talk about it all. Hey, welcome to Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee. With me is my co-host, Kevin Eaton. Good morning, Baltimore. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yes, yes, yes. It's Christmas Eve. Is everyone finished shopping? Yes. You are? Yes. Cassandra Renee, the radio show where we talk about it all. Hey, welcome to Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee. With me is my co-host, Kevin Eaton. Good morning, Baltimore. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yes, yes, yes. It's Christmas Eve. Is everyone finished shopping? Yes. You are? Yes. I think I'm finished about all I'm going to do anyway. Yeah, I'm about done. I like to wait till after Christmas and do the rest of my shopping. You know, that's smart. Yeah. That's I when like, you get all the sales, right? That's my time to go shopping is right is between Christmas and New Year's. Okay. So I guess mm-hmm. your family's used to that by now. Then. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, they yeah, know what to doubt. expect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We are so thrilled to have our Monday morning quarterbacks in the studio with us today. We have Ariel and Jimmy. Welcome. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Yeah, wow. this is nice having them in here with us, you know, to actually see them, you know, as opposed to hearing them, you know, not ever seen them before, but now they're in the booth. Exactly. That's really cool. And it won't be as easy for me to cut Jimmy off, so yeah, I don't know, we may spend the whole 27 minutes talking about Flacco and Rice. <laughs> Yeah, those guys. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, today we're going to talk about a variety of subjects, and it's really all about you. Um, because we've talked, we've covered a lot of subject matter over the past six or seven months. And mm-hmm. last Monday's show was on fire. And just to let you know that um, if you'd like to see the video from last week's show, please visit our website, talkwithcassandra.com, and you can see it in its entirety. Um, get a chance. Please do it because it was fire. Mm-hmm. Very okay? nice show, yeah. Yes. So today we are actually going to talk about, we're going to start off by talking about guns and gun Kevin control. is gun control and mm-hmm. Kevin is actually going to lead that conversation. But we do have Miss B on the air, too. Hi, Miss B. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. How are you doing? Doing great. Great, How great, great. Merry Christmas, Miss B. Same to you, Kevin. Well, thank you. Okay, and just so that our audience knows, our telephone numbers are one 704 1010 or if you're local, 410-481-1010. 410-481-1010. Mm-hmm. We're talking about gun control today. Yes. And basically, it's been a hot subject, you know, since uh, ever since the massacre at the school up there, uh, you know, that happened last weekend. You know, it's, it's been a, a, a subject that's been like on, on the fires again now. And, you know, we as Americans, we are used to having firearms. You know, we're used to being able to uh, purchase guns and, and own rifles and guns for, you know, our own our own reasons, whatever. You know, and uh, so we, what we like to do is actually see if we can reach our audience that are gun owners. And, uh, you know, how do you feel uh, about uh, gun confiscation? You know, uh, it's not a law or anything like that, that uh, they're actually bringing all the guns in and confiscating all the guns. But... It's a subject that is, you know, pretty hot, you know. And at the end of this year, like for instance, at the end of last year, everybody was um, having their New Year's Eve parties and everything. And it was New Year's Eve and everybody was partying and, you know, celebrating the new year to come in. And, you know, nobody actually realized the, the, the law that Obama had signed would actually uh, suspended habeas corpus. And in the, in, in the law that he actually signed put in was called the NDAA. You know, and that has to do with uh, them being able to arrest American citizens and hold them indefinitely with no trial, no charges, no anything like that. Mm. You know, so we're coming to the end of another year now and gun gun uh, control and gun confiscation is something that's on the table. And we just like to, you know, go to the phones and see what our audience, our listening audience, you know, the input on that. OK, but, you know, we actually have Leo on the air right now. Hello, Leo. Yes, good morning, my friend. Good morning. morning. Welcome to the show. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas. A happy Kwanzaa and a happy New Year to you and all your guests. Thank you. Same to you. Let let me briefly speak to gun control. And and that is that uh, I've heard the the head of the National Rifle Association say that the only good guy, the only way you combat a bad guy with a gun is you have a good guy with a gun. Uh, Sometimes that may be the case, but... You know, the National Rifle Association is promoting its own membership when they do those kinds of things. They're promoting gun ownership. They're promoting the sale and manufacture of guns 
whether they're handguns or rifles. And, of course, when the National Rifle Association talks about training uh, guards for every classroom in America, they're also promoting the need, as they see it, to skyrocket their own paid membership. So I don't think they really are credible. I don't think they really care, uh, with the exception of maybe a few, much about our children. Uh, I think that we have to demand that our elected officials not just the President of the United States, but we've got to demand that our congressmen and senators uh, take a stand. I know that Mayor Bloomberg in New York offered up a proposal on how to deal with uh, assault weapons and how to do something to counteract the, the, the terrible atrocities that we're facing with guns. But I haven't heard, I heard Martin O'Malley, to his credit, he said we have too many guns, although he didn't offer up a specific way in which to limit uh, gun ownership. But I haven't heard from uh, Senator Ben Cardin or Senator Barbara Mikulski. Uh, I haven't heard from Congressman Elijah Cummings. Uh, I haven't heard from uh, Congressman Dutch Ruppersberger. And I can go on. I think that the president has only been president of the United States for how many years? Four years. Yes. Some of these Congress people, I would submit to you, have been in office 25 and 30 years. Barbara's 35 years, Barbara Mikulski. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying if you don't just go along to get along, we know you have answers, but I don't think you ought to play chicken and not get involved in the, the, the debate because there are people who will tell you that there's no answer to the problem. I don't believe that. That's not true. There are answers, but you've got to be courageous about standing up and taking the stands that are well thought through on how we're going to deal with this problem. And, and, and guns and drugs go hand in hand, and we know that the, the drug cartels are big business, multi-billion dollar crime syndicates, and sometimes they're supported by big business and banking interests and sometimes elected officials. So uh, I'm going to get off the phone. I know there are other people who have things to say on this issue, but I'm very upset. I'm very unhappy that the elected leaders that have been there, that's why we need term limits. Some of them have been in office 35 and 40 years, right. and they're just waiting to see which way the wind blows rather than trying to struggle to offer up solutions, they're sitting back waiting and saying, well, we're going to see what happens to the President Barack Obama's proposal. We're not going to offer proposals of our own. That is outrageous and it's cowardly. Thank you so well, much you, for Leo. your comment, Leo. We'll see you, Charles and Carlos. Miss B, you're back. Yes, I am. Okay. Charles, hello. Welcome to the show. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning Charles. Yeah, I just got um, three quick points. Uh, I want to ask the gun owners, how do they feel when you know that your house was targeted and broken into just to steal your guns? Then the guns were used by the criminals to kill somebody for cash. Mm. Number two, you know, the house gun is the object that you're murdered with. How do you feel then? It was supposed to protect you, but somebody killed you with it because more family kills family than to kill strangers. And I, I don't think people get that. These things to protect you actually take you out. You're taking yourself out. Thank you so much for your comment, Charles. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you. Hi, We next we have Brother Char Carlos. Welcome to the show. Oh, yes, and good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, uh, praise, uh, praise the Lord and, and blessings to you on this holiday. Have a safe one. Uh, on the matter of, uh, of gun control, uh, uh, the issue, everybody tries, and I think Leo has a very, very strong point, but everybody tries to skirt around the central issue. That is, that is, is guns are the, the things that would be the implement of the tool that takes to life. And uh, so when you talk about mental health and, and other factors, uh, this, this is like a straw man or a side game, which uh, we should be concerned about. But America can do whatever it wants to do if it wants to do it. Uh, they can pass all kinds of laws, uh, taking away individual rights. Uh, they can interpret the Constitution any way they want to. If they want gun control, they can institute gun control and uh, and you know not 
not taking everybody's guns away, but the serious assault weapons. I just wanted to leave here with one particular um, comment, uh, additional comment uh, for educational purposes. Uh, there is an article in uh, yesterday's uh, Washington Post regarding the young man uh, who took the lives of those 26 people up in Newtown. If you, if your audience can get an audio, uh, a copy of the audio, uh, of the article online or elsewhere, it is interesting reading into uh, a resident evil genius. And uh, the title is Lanza's Isolated Life Stymies Investigators. So just one excerpt very quickly. The 20-year-old who on a bright Friday morning killed 26 people at the elementary school he had attended, as well as his mother and himself, destroyed one promising key to his unspoken passions, hammering his computer drive into a digital, digital silence. He left no note, confided in no friends. His mother, the one person he was known to have spoken to in anything more than monosyllabic responses, he shot in the head four times while she was in bed. The article is much more extensive. It gives us an insight into uh, these, the personality uh, traits of, 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 of some individuals who are isolated and uh, who uh, we can uh, kind of get a scope on exactly um, what's, what's happening to some of these people. But get that article and read it if you can, please, in uh, Washington Post uh, uh, the Sunday edition. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. We appreciate it. Okay. Jimmy, you know I have to ask you what your feelings are on this, given what you do for a living and you actually have owned um, weapons. Um, One of of my concerns is with the um, the president of the NRA. One thing that he spoke out about was arming the teachers in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is something... That's unacceptable. Okay. One of the reasons that they don't arm um, security guards in the malls is because of the volume of people. And you're always taught that you, if you fire your weapon, be aware of your backstop. Mm. And during, during a situation where you have a classroom full of kids running around, the last thing you will want is a teacher with, the, with a weapon. Then the next thing comes into question, what is going to be the level of the training? Mm-hmm. Being that I'm a security professional, our level of training involves what to do in the situation if the room is crowded. But to actually just go out and get an actual gun permit, the only thing it requires you to do is be able to shoot that weapon. But there's, there's so many situations that you can be in. What I would like to see happen is to put armed security in the schools, mm-hmm. people who are professionally trained. Mm-hmm. That's the only way you can ensure the safety of the children. Wow, that's a very interesting point. Yeah, I agree with him. I don't think that... Uh to teaching is professional within itself. Yes. And to sit around and think about, uh, you know, your safety and, and how to use your weapon and everything, you know, I think goes against the grain of actual being a, a teacher. You have to, a teacher has to stay in mind of a teacher, you know, and I don't think that that would be good for teachers to have to carry, you know, weapons to school or anything like that. I look at some of the teachers who I went to high school with mm-hmm. in middle school. Mm-hmm. They look some of the last people I want to see carry a weapon. I hear you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Our number is 410-481-1010 or 1877-704-1010. Miss B, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, uh, the the thing with the teachers carrying the weapons, I don't think is a good idea because sometimes you have people, children, for example, these teenagers, they get up in your face. Guess what? Somebody might snap and say, you know what? I ain't putting up with this and boom. There you go. You got another issue. Very good point. Mm-hmm. Or good you point. got these kids that know you have a gun. They get the gun and use it on them. Mm-hmm. You never know. Absolutely. That, that's what a teacher had brought to my attention the other day. She said, "If you know, I don't want to be carrying no guns because she was mm-hmm. saying if she carried a gun, they would jump her and take the gun from her. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, because these kids are big. They tower oh, over these uh, teachers yeah. sometimes, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It is 1117. Guess what time it is? It's time for our Monday morning quarterback segment with Ariel and Jimmy. Hi, Ariel and Jimmy. Hey. Hey, Jimmy, what did you think about that game, Ravens versus Giants? I was really impressed with this game. Okay. It, it, it was probably the first game that I've seen this season where the offense, the defense, and the special teams 
play well together. Mm -hmm. One of the things I spoke about uh, last week was the whole thing with time of possession. In the game yesterday, we had one one possession where we kept the ball seven minutes. The second the possession right behind that, we kept the ball over six minutes. Mm -hmm. And that is so important to our defense. And as you see, if you have a defense that's sitting on the sideline 20, 25 minutes, when they do come on the field, they are very much capable of shutting down any offense in the league. Right. They're well rested. Ariel, what are your thoughts? I definitely agree with Jimmy. Um, I was very impressed with our performance. Um, considering last week how the defense was on the field pretty much the majority of the first half and to see them be able to rest and our offense to take control. And when they came back off the bench, they were ready to roll, you know, and they were able to stop Eli Manning and prevent him from making connections with his, his receivers. And I was very much so impressed. This is the team that I want to see from now on. I tell you, you know, three seemed to be the magic number yesterday. They just worked all sorts of magic with third down. Yes, Let's yes. talk mm-hmm. about that. And that's something that's very important. We had one, uh, actually it was two possessions in a row, mm-hmm. where we went from having third and 20, uh, sorry, third and 24, then we had a third and 15, and we were very much able easily to convert them in the first downs. Mm-hmm. And that area of the field that we was in is very important. Um, I guess the only concern I had, you kind of wish that once we got in the red zone, that we scored touchdowns and not field goals. Exactly. But the flip side of that is how long we had the ball. Because when, you, when you're keeping the ball seven minutes, yes. that's a long possession. Yes. And that's even more time when you have the elite quarterbacks are not on the field scoring points. Exactly. Because they have to be on the field to score points. Hmm. Ariel? I was definitely impressed with the offensive line, how they were able to um, maintain the game and gave Flacco plenty of time to connect with his receivers. Mm-hmm. And the, the third and 24, I think, um, Bowden caught that ball, but the receivers died for the ball. It wasn't, oh, okay, it's too high. Oh, well, I tried. They really made a, a huge effort to catch the ball. Yeah. So I, I was very, very happy about that. Yeah, there were a lot of power plays. I mean, oh my gosh, those receivers, they were on point. I was amazed. I just sat there just watching the TV with my mouth open like, I can't believe he caught that ball. I was very impressed with our defense also. Mm-hmm. You have to remember, our defense is a unit that's suffering a lot of in, a lot of injuries. A lot of injuries, yes. And so we pretty much shut them down with backups and people who came off the uh, practice squad. Mm-hmm. And say next week, next week we're supposed to be playing our backups. But our backups are the ones, who, as far as defense is concerned, who very much helped us win the game yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm excited. I'm hoping that this is the momentum that'll just push us through the playoffs and into the Super Bowl. (laughs) Hey, well, thank you two very much. And this officially ends our Monday morning quarterback segment with Ariel and Jimmy. This show is being sponsored by Coiffure Exclusive Salon. If you are transitioning from relaxed to natural hair, we are the salon for you. We specialize in hair replacement and hair extension services. Please give us a call at 410-663-2643 or 855-4-SO-INS. Also to our listeners, if there is anything uh, that you'd like to talk about, we have like about 10 minutes or so left, give us a call and let's just chat about it because it's Christmas Eve and any and everything goes. The number is 1-877-704-1010 or 410-481-1010. Coiffure, C-O-I-F-F-U-R-E. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to put you I on was, the spot. I was just thinking about, you know, this is a good Christmas because, you know, yes. a couple of days ago was the end of the world. So Yeah, the 21st. Yeah. And I missed it. Yeah, we was, all missed it, huh? I was working hard. I'm like, oh, today uh, yeah. was supposed to be the day. Yeah, this, yeah, yesterday was it. I was like, okay, so uh, that was good. That was good. Real good. <laughs> I'm glad we're still here. Yeah, I'm glad <laughs> we're know, still right? here, too. Yeah. So what were you doing, Miss B? Well, I wanted to share something with you. We had an uh, ad from this local car dealership. He was encouraging people to come in and buy a car because to, if tomorrow never comes, you don't owe, the, owe for the car. Exactly. That was so funny. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, who's gonna who's gonna fall for that one? You'd be surprised. The number oh, of people yeah. who would fall for that. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, we have Mitchell on the air. Hi, Mitchell. Yes, hi. Good morning. Um, Merry Christmas to everybody. Same to you. Thanks for calling. And um, I'm just calling because I was. Um, you said you can make a comment. One of my one of my concerns is I was um, 
I've been blessed to get a job just because I was laid off last year and I was out of work for a year and I found a job. Congratulations. I had a job and now the other thing that I'm just, um, people, I just want us as African Americans to wake up and start doing more things for each other and helping each other and also this thing with our president and this thing about Social Security because one of my concerns is that I don't want them to keep giving up everything to let the super rich have everything that they want to have. We That's can't right. give up our social security. Our parents work. Now we're working. And now I have a son that's working. And I don't think it's right that they can go and compromise and take away what we put in there. Nobody gave that to us. That's ours. We still never got our 40 acres in a mural. Mm -hmm. We've always been sacrificing as African Americans to build this country and do everything. And now they come and we got to sacrifice. And I go around this state of Maryland, and I look around places. I even, for the, my new job, I had to go to Atlanta. And um, when I go around, I see who living well and how they live. And then I see how we live. In. And when I was in Atlanta, it was actually families. They call it the Spaghetti Highway. You actually had families, mothers and fathers, living down there in the, under their highways. Mm -hmm. And these things that people don't know about, or I don't know if they want to discuss or pay attention, but it's something truly wrong in this country. Yes, I agree. In this world. That's sad. So, you know, I just, it, I'm being real, and I'm just like, we got to wake up. And all our smart, educated African Americans, from we got to stop looking like we can't help each other or look back and say it's somebody's fault when they know what's going on. Exactly. So. Thank you so much, Mitchell. And again, congratulations on your new job. Thanks. Okay, you, have Mitchell a Merry Christmas. Wow. I tell you, um, I actually found out that the, like I said, we're just talking random stuff right now, mm -hmm. y'all, that Jet Magazine actually published the first male gay marriage okay. in their publication. And I was talking to Jimmy about that. I mean, they actually had uh, females. They actually published their marriage, but this is the first time that they actually published uh, uh, males. So, Jimmy, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, my hat's off to Jet Magazine because um, in, in our society now, it's something that we're going to have to learn to accept. And there, there are uh, so many people out there who wants to condemn the gay marriage or even condemn the gay relationship. And it's, for, as far as I'm concerned, the most important thing is for two people to be happy. Yeah. Well, it was male and female, male, 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 female, female. With the divorce rate being so high, something needs to be done. Mm hmm And to sit there and, 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 and say, oh, these two people shouldn't be together. As far as I'm concerned, when, when a person goes in their house and closes their door, whatever goes on in their house is their business. Mm hmm Absolutely. And did you hear that Richard Adams died? And a lot of people don't know who Richard Adams is. Um, he used both the altar and the courtroom to help begin the push for gay marriage for decades before it actually reached the center of the national consciousness. Um, after a brief illness, Adams died on December the 17th at the age of 65 in Hollywood. Um, he was actually granted a marriage license in 1975. Wow. Very interesting, right? Um, the couple's public life began when they heard about a clerk in Boulder, Colorado named Rorex, a pioneer in her own right, who took the unprecedented steps of giving marriage licenses to gay couples. Um, they actually, the couple actually traveled to Colorado, had a ceremony at the First Unitarian Church of Denver, and were granted a license from Warwick's before the state's attorney general ordered her to stop giving them to gay couples. So I actually uh, got that information offline today, and I thought that was just really, really interesting and just mm -hmm. thought I'd fold that into Jet Magazine and what they did. Okay. So that's been going on for a while. It's 1975. 1975. Yeah. But you didn't hear about it right. as much. You know, but now it's on the forefront. Okay. Yeah. And it looks like Chad Johnson gave himself a very interesting um, gift. He actually spent uh, $10,000 for a pair of uh, shoes, a pair of tennis shoes. Yes. Well. I know. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy, mm -hmm. crazy, crazy. Ten thousand dollars for a pair. Of Ten thousand dollars for a pair of tennis shoes. What type of tennis shoes was that? They were Nikes. Oh wow. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. Why make them so cost so much money. You know, actually, let me see. These are these were actually worn in Back to the Future. 
Oh, okay. Yes, Marty McFly. Right. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I guess that's what makes them so special. Oh yeah. Oh. Right. I really think that's a. I really think that's an expensive uh, gift for an unemployed athlete. How about that? <laughs> what do you think about that, Miss B? I tell you, that is an expensive gift. A man, he could give it to me. I think I would have spent it a lot wiser than oh, that. Yeah, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. So, Miss B, what are you, what are your plans for the rest of the day? Well, I'm actually at work, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna do one more client. Then I've got to run out and get one last gift. Okay, you're gonna be caught up in all that madness, huh? Uh, no, I'm just gonna run in one store and run right back out. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I just hope you have a wonderful uh, Christmas Eve and oh, Christmas yeah. Day. Yeah. And you all do the same. Thank you. Thank you. And, Kevin, what are your plans? Um, well, I'm about to leave up out of here. I think I'm going to make pick up, like, one little gift or something like that. Mm-hmm. Just like Miss B said, make their last little uh, stop in the stores. And that's about it. Shut it down for the holidays. Jimmy and Ariel. Jimmy? Well... First of all, I got to uh, run past a couple of my friends' house because anytime I'm in town and don't stop past their house, I, I get an attitude. Uh-oh, uh-oh, you got to take care of that. Yes. Ariel, what are your plans? Um, definitely get something to eat because I'm hungry. <laughs> um, <laughs> after that, probably wrap the gifts that I have okay. and uh, get ready for Christmas tomorrow. Yeah, because what I'm doing is I'm taking Team Shop Talk out to lunch oh, today. Right yeah, we're going to get crab cakes and woo, it's going to be on and popping. <laughs> so thank you all so much for tuning in to our show. And until next week, bye-bye. Bye-bye, y'all. Bye-bye. <laughs> Shop Talk with Cassandra Renee, the radio show where we talk about it all. Beauty, sports, current events, health, travel, music, and so much more. You can reach us at 